Hey, welcome into Apple. How can I help you today? Hey, yeah, I'm uh, looking to buy an iPad today. Oh, that's awesome. In order to find the best iPad for you, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Yeah, sure. So uh, tell me, what do you plan on using it for? Mostly just day-to-day -day stuff, you know, watch YouTube, social media, maybe edit some photos, like gaming. Very cool. So uh, is there a budget you're trying to stick to? Well, I know the, the pros are a little bit out of my price range, but I saw that the 10th generation iPad just came out a couple weeks ago, and I know there's also the Air, which is on its fifth generation, so I figured I might as well go with the 10th generation, right? A quick question though, why is it cheaper? <laughs> yeah, so it, because there's not a extra name on the end of it, it's just, it's just iPad, not Air or Pro, it's technically the 10th generation of iPad. Oh. Well, that's confusing. Well, <laughs> you know, there's a reason for everything that we do here. So what's with the weird names? So, how long uh, do you plan on keeping the iPad? Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is actually a pretty big purchase for me, so I definitely want it to last a long time, but I'm not really too concerned. I mean, it just came out a couple of weeks ago, so I figured it's going to get updates for a long time, right? Well, yeah, um... All the developers and accessories and things are really starting to be optimized for the new M1 and M2 processors. Cool, so the 10th gen has that? No, no, it actually has the A14, which technically came out in the iPad Air from 2020. So what does the new Air have? Uh, the, the M1. M1 chip. Okay, yeah. well, you know, the 10th gen is still cheaper and I can use the cost difference to buy the pencil. Then whenever I upgrade in the future, I can still use the pencil. We actually moved the camera to the, the perfect spot, but what it meant is we couldn't use the second generation Apple Pencil because no way could we have an asymmetrical design. We care far too much about design to let that happen. So instead, we designed a simple, easy to lose, I mean, use adapter that you can plug the pencil into and marry the iPad and the pencil together. Does the adapter come in the box? No? Yeah, okay, see ya. More often than not, when I see Apple's latest lineup of all their products, this is the clip that constantly plays in my head. That doesn't make any when myself and others say that this iPad shouldn't exist, it's not because it's a bad iPad by any means. It just doesn't make sense as a variant in the lineup of products. When it comes to premium brands, in my opinion, you want each product to have a clear target audience. If you think I'm over-dramatizing the reality of this scenario, reason one, I genuinely was an Apple employee for about four years, and that skit you saw was essentially my life for thousands of times over. I loved my job and it genuinely was important for me to find the best best device for each person. And when Apple makes products that just makes no sense, it makes the shopping experience less premium. Reason number two, I'm not the only one who thinks this. How are we gonna explain this to others when we don't even know which products to recommend to our friends? If we had four great products, that's all we need. And as a matter of fact, if we only had four, we could put the A team on every single one of them. So that's what we decided to do, to focus on four great products. Back in 97, when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, he immediately cut the majority of Apple products because they were just ridiculous. Now, of course, he talks about the four core products because at the time there was no iPhone and iPad. So he drew a very simple diagram, laptop, desktop, consumer, pro. Put a product in each category and that's it. Now this diagram absolutely still works in today. You just add a couple more categories for iPhone, iPad, maybe Apple Watch, and you can insert products for each of those categories. The problem is that over the years, Apple has added these products that kind of just make it a little bit more confusing and a little less clear of who that product is exactly for. Now to their credit, it almost seems like they're correcting it a little bit. We've seen some of these products that kind of have weird crossovers go away, better, more identifiable products replace them. But for me, this is one of those products that just doesn't fit. Now, no matter what iOS device you have or multiple iOS devices you have, you can utilize today's sponsor, Detail. Brand colors. Detail is by far the easiest Mac application to utilize all of your iOS devices, mirrorless cameras, cinema cameras into your Mac to give you a multi-cam experience unlike any other. Simply download the companion app to any iOS device, it'll instantly find your Mac on your network, where you then can combine all of your different cameras wirelessly to show off different angles for your podcast.
podcasts, cooking shows, game streaming. Having multiple angles is one of the best ways to keep engagement high in videos. And with detail, you can easily record, live stream, add automatic text effects behind your head, and easily export for either vertical or horizontal. If you guys are interested in learning more, check out the link in the description down below. Thanks Detail for sponsoring today's video. Because this iPad does exist and I do have it in my hands and I've been using it for a little bit, and I feel like it'd be a terrible video if I just ended it here, let's talk about the experience of the new base iPad if you choose to go with this one. Aesthetically, I love it. It's matching all the squared, sharper edges of the other Apple products coming out. Type-C, fantastic, but it's not the ultra-fast like Thunderbolt technologies. Really, it's like USB 2.0 designed in a Type-C case. The screen is nice, peaking at 500 nits, I can definitely feel the difference compared to my Pro, but most of the time I'm using the iPad inside, so it's not a big issue. The borders, uh, they definitely stood out to me when I first grabbed it, pretty chunky. It's also a non-laminated display, and probably my biggest gripe is the fact that it is only sRGB. My iPad Pro is the Pro XDR, but even the Air has many more colors to be able to be reproduced on the screen, so if you are doing photography photography, graphic design, and that's important to you that you have a accurate green, this probably isn't gonna be the best bet for you. Two things I love about this iPad though is definitely the camera, which I know everyone has talked about. It is absolutely the best placement for a camera on a tablet. The other thing I was very curious about is the Touch ID over Face ID. Now I love Face ID on the phone, but man, I actually hate it on my iPad. Most of the time, it's in this smart case, right? When I'm traveling, which doesn't angle up very high. And if I'm sitting like this, Face ID is just fine. But a lot of times I'm not fully seated. And so I come up to it like this and it will not scan my face. So I have to like do this game where I'm going around. I hate it. And this guy, we got touch ID on the side. And so no matter where I'm standing, how I'm sitting, I can just simply click the side and it's already unlocked. I absolutely hope touch ID makes its way to the pro line. Now performance, again, I hate the fact that they put a two year old chip in here. No, it's by no means slow. I was using LumaFusion to edit some social media videos, Darkroom to edit photos, and switching back and forth between regular and pro applications with relative ease, everything has been pushing towards M1 and M2, and so it just absolutely is a cheap shot for Apple to throw a non-M chip in here. Now the whole Apple Pencil adapter thing, again, I already said most of it in the skit. I have the second gen for my Pro, and man, this would have been nice, and oh look at that, it actually kind of magnetized with the smart case. <laughs> if this is your first iPad, you're getting an iPad as a gift for someone, you need it for education or school, it will do everything that you want an iPad to do, unless I've already listed it as a con. After seeing everyone's videos and gathering my own thoughts, I think if they would have released this iPad at $350, $100 less than what it is, almost none of us would be complaining. We would still mention the things we mentioned, but like so many other devices that are good and then priced extremely competitively, you kind of forgive most of the cons because you can just go, well, you know, it's a 349 iPad. But the Air, is $150 more. But to be honest, you get so much more value for that $150. You know what, I didn't even look at this to compare. I want to add the sixth generation mini into the comparison. because that's only $50 more than this iPad. It has a newer chip, A15 Bionic, still not M, but it's newer. You get the second generation Apple Pencil support. It's a fully laminated display, anti-reflective coating with wide color display P3. The same specs as the iPad Air 5th gen. Yeah, to be honest, I, I would straight up go with the mini over this one. What do you guys think about all this? Am I overreacting? Let me know in the comments below. And real quick, I just wanna say a huge thank you to the nearly 3,000 people that have joined this channel and community in the past couple of weeks. I had an insane goal of getting to 100k by the end of the year i'm uploading videos like crazy working hard and i think we can do this together so if you enjoyed this video and you're not already make sure you get subscribed if i've piqued your interest with davinci resolve coming to ipad and you guys haven't seen that video already make sure you check it out right here see you guys in the next video